Hi, everyone, and welcome to Monday, uh, the first day of our uh, Holy Week here. Uh, it is March 29th, hard to believe we are all ready to the end of March and getting ready to head into April. Uh, this is going to be the last uh, week for a while that we do these things, but I do appreciate you all joining me as we have uh, carved out this time during the Lent season to have some alone time with God. It's that time where the Holy Spirit can speak to our spirit and teach us, convict us of things uh, that we need convicted of. Um, just a real time for us to hold ourselves accountable to God. So I appreciate you joining me here. We're going to start off today with a uh, Something from the world's greatest collection of church jokes. This is called A Matter of Perspective. It says three clergymen were deep in a discussion of the best positions for praying while a telephone repairman worked nearby. Kneeling is definitely best, claimed one. No, another contended. I get the best results standing with my arms outstretched to heaven. You're both wrong, the third argued. The most effective prayer position is lying on the floor face down. Well, the telephone repairman could not contain himself any longer. Hey, guys, he interrupted. The best, best praying I ever did was when I was hanging upside down from a telephone pole. <laughs> yep, many times uh, when we're in trouble, that's when we do our best praying. <laughs> well, this... Uh, Holy Week, as we lead into Easter Sunday, the theme is Christ Lives. And so let's uh, join together in prayer as we ask for the Holy Spirit's uh, guidance during our time uh, this hour. Let's pray. Almighty God, you who have sent Jesus into the world to suffer, die, and rise again for our sake, help us to experience your transforming resurrection power within our lives and ministry. We offer our prayers in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, our psalm reading uh, for this week is going to be one quite familiar to you. You may already know it by heart, but it's the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23. So uh, you can turn there unless you uh, already have it memorized and know it by heart. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Psalm 23 is Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A psalm that has been uh, well known for a long, long time and very comforting for many, many people. Well, uh, for this uh, day, our scripture reading comes from the book of John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. So if you want to turn there to John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. This is the story of when uh, Jesus, what they called Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor. It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should 
save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Well, I should think so. With the miracles that Jesus was performing, and especially the raising of Lazarus, that would cause many uh, to come uh, to belief, really authenticated uh, Jesus is the Messiah. Well, our reading uh, for reflection, and once again, I do hope that as you read that or heard it read, that there was some word or phrase that kind of uh, jumped up at you, which uh, would indicate that the Holy Spirit is uh, kind of uh, pricking your heart and your mind to uh, take note of that. So I'll pray you jotted that down and we'll meditate on that later. Our reading for reflection today is a little bit longer than usual, and it comes from Visions of a World Hungry by Thomas G. Pettipis. This is what he writes. He's writing about re resurrection, experiencing resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday in prison. Today is Resurrection Sunday, my first Easter in prison. Surely the, the regime can't continue to keep almost 10,000 political prisoners in its jails. In here, it is much easier to understand how the men in the Bible felt, stripping themselves of everything that was superfluous. Many of the prisoners have already heard that they have lost their homes, their furniture, and everything they own. Our families are broken up. Many of our children are wandering the streets, their father in one prison, their mother in another. There is not a single cup, but a score of Christian prisoners experience the joy of celebrating communion without bread or wine, the communion of empty hands. The non-Christians said, we will help you. We will talk quietly so that you can meet. Too dense a silence would have drawn the guard's attention as surely as the lone voice of, a, of the preacher. We have no bread nor water to use instead of wine, I told them, but we will act as though we had. This meal in which we take part, I said, reminds us of the prison, the torture, the death, and final victory of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The bread is the body which he gave for humanity. The fact that we have none represents very well the lack of bread and the hunger of so many millions of human beings. The wine, which we don't have today, <clears throat> is his blood and represents our dream of a united humanity, of a just society, without difference of race or class. I held out my empty hand to the first person on my right and placed it over his open hand and the same with the others. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Afterward, all of us raised our hands to our mouths, receiving the body of Christ in silence. Take, drink, this is the blood of Christ which was shed to seal the new covenant of God with men. Let us give thanks, sure that Christ is here with us, strengthening us. We gave thanks to God and finally stood up and embraced each other. A while later, another non-Christian prisoner said to me, you people have something special, which I would like to have. The father of the dead girl came up to me and said, pastor, this was a real experience. I believe that today I discovered what faith is. Now I believe that I am on the road. Again, that from Visions of a World Hungry by Thomas G. Pen of Peace. Well, we've come to that uh, time uh, today where we can lift up uh, those who are on our heart and mind. Uh, could be prayers for yourself. Could be for a friend, a family member, or a neighbor, a brother and sister in Christ, uh, someone that you know in the community. Uh, obviously, we need to keep uh, keep the tragedy, the families that were the victims of the tragedy in Colorado, also uh, up front and center. So let's uh, go to the Lord. I'll give you a few moments of silence, and then I'll close this out.
Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you once again, as we do every day. And every day we pour our hearts out to you. And Lord, may this next hour that we spend with you be a chance for you to pour your heart out to us. Lord, may we arrive at that right frame of mind, heart, and soul that allows us to receive your still small voice. If there are any in pain among us, Lord, we know that you will shout into their heart, mind, and soul. Lord, for those of us who are experiencing joy, you will whisper to us. And for many of us, as we continue on day after day, night after night, you will speak to us, speak into our conscience very spontaneously. And we'll know it is from you. We'll know that it is that inaudible but unmistakable still small voice. So we pray for that as we spend quiet time with you. We expect to feel your presence as we pray to you and offer up those who are on our hearts and minds now, those who need healing from your almighty hand for the brokenness in their lives, whether it's brokenness in their physical bodies, brokenness in their relationships, brokenness in their spirit or brokenness in their minds and emotions. Lord, we lift them all up to you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, our uh, hymn is The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want. Now, this is listed here as the Scottish Psalter. The Lord's my shepherd I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me the quiet waters by. So again, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. That is the first verse of that Scottish Psalter, and we will uh, continue to read a verse each day as we go. But uh, for now, I trust that you will now go into your quiet time and Take that word or phrase that the Holy Spirit has brought to your attention and journal. Listen for God's still small voice. What is it he is teaching you about that word or phrase? And then journal about it in your journal. And you will find that it is uh, really a blessing to be able to go back and uh, read over these uh, later uh, from time to time. Well, until we meet tomorrow at noon, uh, hear this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. That from number 6, 24 through 26. Well, blessings on each of you. I uh, trust that you will have a sweet, sweet time uh, with your creator God as uh, you spend alone time with him now. And we will see you right back here tomorrow at noon. Blessings on you.